We are now almost arriving uh, at the end of the conference, but at this point, again, many thanks for the invitation and the great conference. I'm happy to participate. Um, the topic, like Pauline already said, my master thesis uh, focused on the early abstraction in Rio de Janeiro and um, my work focused on the early abstraction or geometric abstraction in Rio de Janeiro between 47 and 51 and on the artists Amir um, Mavinier, Ivan Serpa and Abraham Palatnik, their experiences. I show some images that you also know what I'm talking about here. Um, their experiences with the mentally ill and with children and the um, very important role of Mario Pedrosa and his theoretical thinking that nourished their passage from figuration to abstraction um, before the first biennial. Um, my concerns then relied upon a challenging um, the constitution of an own abstract language developed before the first Sao Paulo Biennial, generally referred to as a starting point of abstract art or geometric abstract art in the country, and B, contesting the assumption that Brazilian artists did not arrive at an abstract understanding in art via self-determined confrontations with Cubist principles, but that they just adapted consolidated European styles, namely neoplasticism, constructivism, or concrete art. In an outlook of my master's thesis, I also analyzed the relevance for the later development of, neo of neoconcrete art. But preliminary to these concerns and topic of today's lecture, I found it necessary to study the general history of abstract art in Brazil which meant to study its relative dismissal for the sake of a figurative modernity dominating the art scene until the 1950s and verify where and how instances of abstract art could be found in artistic manifestations despite or within the Brazilian modernismus of the decades between 1920 and 40. Here maybe I have to excuse, I'm... Uh, um, exceeding the time frame of the conference uh, to the past because it settled mainly in the 30s. But nevertheless, I hope it's also a good passage then later to Andrea's lecture, who also focuses an early example of abstract art, but in photographies in the mid-40s. And uh, to the panel exposure, um, maybe what most um, links it to that uh, apart from the internationalization aspect that is important, but um, like taking the examples from exhibitions, as we will see. The following presentation of this history of abstract art in Brazil is not meant to be exhaustive, or exhaustive as it could be in such a lecture of 20 minutes. It explores some narrative strands and highlights events, concepts, and analogies that appear intriguing to me more than fulfilling the task of answering questions, this work in progress opens questions to be solved in subsequent discussions and researches. Within the various routes Brazilian modernism took since and even before its official founding in 1922 with the Modern Art Week of Sao Paulo as the first avant-garde moment and collective refusal of academic norms, Dialogue, negotiations, and tensions with international or European art and art scenes and styles have been of constant and crucial importance. Closely linked to these internationalization processes is the rise of abstract art in the country, tracing its evolution from an imported heritage suspiciously received from outside to its establishment as a national art style. During the 1920s, an overt cosmopolitanism combined with a self-conscious nationalism demanded modernization, nationalization, and universalization in our, all areas of social life. Many of the artists had been drawn to Paris, where they were actively involved in uh, its cultural life. Like here we see Tarsila do Amarao in an exhibition of her in Paris uh, during the 1920s. And this passage to um, 
um, Paris also somehow triggered the need to define an own genuinely Brazilian artistic language comprised in the synthesis of European models like expressionism, fauvism, um, cubism or surrealism and the return to the own cultural roots, paradigmatically exemplified by works of Tarsila do Amaral or the manifests Pau Brasil and Anthropophagia by Oswald de Andrade. Due to the course of local and co global politics, the economic crisis of 1929 and the beginning socialist-oriented Vargas era in 1930, International flows became more and more restrained and artistic production fell under the content-based primacy of Brazilian reality. While these modernistas still had to fight for recognition in the official art canon, they developed a moderate socially engaged figurative style embodied by Candido, Candido Portinari or Di Cavalcanti. Transformation came with the next decade and the historical year 1945, the end of World War II, coinciding with the end of the Vargas era, signified for Brazil the beginning of intense economical, political and cultural construction on national and international scale, reflected also in exceptional expansions of the artistic sector, the successive foundations of the modern art museums of Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro and of the International Biennial. Ironically, what should be held for modern arts, modern arts long fought for victory by way of its institutionalization suddenly appeared to threaten and at least temporarily suppress their own figurative modernism as it was overrun by a true avalanche of international and abstract art. These events finally paved the way for a new modernism generation, the abstract avant-garde movements of the 1950s. Let us now focus on early manifestations of abstract arts, uh, of abstract ideas entering in the 1930s. Throughout the decade, the political and cultural austerity of the Vargas era and a notorious public disinterest and even hostility towards modern art made exhibitions of international art that could have fostered exchange, innovation and expansion of the artistic climate rather exceptional cases. Be it as it were, the decade started with the first exhibition of Parisian art shown in Recife, Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo. Brazilian artists Vicente Dorego Montero and French poet Geojas had assembled hundred works from well-known artists. The one that you see here um, are now... It's, why isn't it... Ah. Okay, <laughs> that was the special one, André Lotte, no? La Negresse, yeah. Especially I put, put it, maybe you noted it, because of a Negra, of course, and because uh, Tassila de Amaral was uh, yeah, studying with André Lotte while being in Paris. Well, these works uh, are all not, um, I couldn't prove that they were at the exhibition, that needs all more um, research still. Well, there were 100 works from well-known artists and even abstract pieces by August Herbin and Josh Balmé. Even here is the same. I mean, it's hard to say which work was there for an August Herbin. And, but well, you have some possibilities or it's like speculation like uh, Susanna referred to yesterday. Of what we know about the event, it was of no success and especially by the Recife public widely rejected. Rego Montero himself had spent several years in the French capital where he became engaged with Cubist principles but also with abstract motives of Brazilian indigenous origin. In 1922 he created a completely geometric abstract painting as it seems a singular case in his oeuvre. Through the engagement with Cubist principles by this I mean basically the decomposition of the pictorial space and figures also, other Brazilian artists arrived at the integration of geometric abstract elements. Arasi Amaral um, detects here two types. First, combinations of a figurative foreground and an abstract background to be found in works by Tassila, a negra we saw before, La Sassigal or Antonio Gomedi. And second, uh, in surrealist or metaphysical landscapes with stereometric figures, again in Tassila do Amaral. 
About the shock and outright indignation these or lesser bold positions unleashed among the general public, the annual exhibition of fine arts in, of 1931 in Rio de Janeiro gives a clear account. Also known as Revolutionis, Re, Revolutionary Salon, where modern art entered the academic arena for the first time, it was immediately knocked out. The event closed by protests of conservative professors at the National School of Fine Arts. This reactionary outburst was contrary to the, to the then freshly announced uh, director of the academy, Lucio Costa, who had envisaged a mediation between academic and modern tendencies um, by imposing um, professors of both strands. One of them was the architect Grigory Vajarczyk. Like Costa, strongly influenced by Le Corbusier's functionalist architecture and introduced it to the country by the end of the 1920s, as we see here, the Casa Modernista. It seems quite peculiar to me that the Academy housed the School for Architecture under the same roof until 1937 and therefore evolved in close proximity to the fine arts. I mean, I had to immediately to think of the Bauhaus, but all here has to be more researched still also, how the real climate was. Naturally, architectural designs by Vajabcik, Eduardo Redi, or Flavio de Cavallo integrated the 1931 exhibition. Moreover, de Cavallo, famous for his multifaceted artistic production and his essentially separatist personality, showed an abstract sculpture composed by cubist elements. Two years later, these two events merged in the first exhibition of modern art of the SPA in Sao Paulo. Besides the first generation modernistas that since 1932 formed the Society Pro Modern Art, a considerable number of international artists completed the program. More interesting than this exhibition at this point, though we will come back to it later, um, is uh, are the next occasions where national and international artists and architects meet. In the 1938 edition of the May Salon and especially its third edition of 1939 in which Flavio de Cavallo took over the organization quasi alone. Fueled by an affirmative internationalism and refreshed avant-garde impulse, both exhibitions included a broadened scale of abstract art in 1938, reliefs by Ben Nicholson, or in 1939, for example, works by Alexander Calder, Jean, Jean Helion, and Alberto Magnelli. The event touched the spirit of the time and opened a heated debate between pure and engaged or figurative and abstract art, which would later surge more fervently with the inauguration of the Modern Art Museum in Sao Paulo and the first biennial. In comparison to the international contributions at the third edition, more than half of them abstract in nature, the illustrations of the accompanying catalogue reveal a sharp difference to the international national approaches, mostly having the human figure as subject in portraits and nudes, but probably in accordance to the avant-garde program of the Salon more in neutral or aestheticized than in social contexts. Like we see here two works, one from Di Cavalcanti and um, La Sassigal, what also Susanne showed yesterday, the painting, the immigrant boat. Here is also um, in, um, a, a graphic example of this. <clears throat> Apart from being um, then already perceived as a serious threat to the own modern project, it is not surprising that the critique of abstract art, then led by Mario de Andrade and Sergio Millier, was mainly anchored in a supposed dehumanization and alienation from life, including the abandonment of the human figure and the detachment between the image and its reference to reality, as well as the exaggerated use of scientific concept, hence abstract art's incomprehensibility and distance to the average beholder. Also other artists expressed their discontent publicly, publicly. for example, La Sassigal and Victor Brejere, who together with Flavio de Cavallo, Antonio Gomedi and Jakob Ruchti had formed the selection board for the 1939 exhibition in a press release. In a press release they stated, in our conception of art, 
Our conception of art is intimately linked with figurative human art, as it is this which exists independently of any other factor. This is contrary to abstract art, which in our opinion finds its principal reason for being in relation to architecture, applied arts, decoration. As we have observed before, and here this is the only abstract position at the uh, Third May Salon, uh, again from an architect, Jakob Ruchti, we come back to it soon. As we have observed before in the case of architecture, where the ideas of Le Corbusier and the Bauhaus had already begun to flourish, we can verify that specifically inside these areas of applied arts, geometric abstract elements legally entered the visual culture of the country between 1920 and 40. Under this pretext, even Segal turned to an abstract language in 1924. Various other examples can be encountered in textile and interior or exterior designs by Regina Gomedi Graz, by her brother Antonio Gomedi, and by her husband, the Swiss artist John Graz. Many of these designs indicate not only a simple execution of geometric structures, they captivate the eye through an intriguing play of forms and planes, dynamic rhythms and beer expressive and organic characteristics, which can be further testified in garden and landscape designs by Roberto Bolle Marx, here for the Ministry of Education and Culture, or Portinari's analogies of the four elements he executed on big walls with big scale wall panels for the ministry's interior. The program of the third May Salon had also positive resonances, pointing out the importance of the international contributions in granting access to artistic approaches that had hitherto been neglected by the local art scene and prevented their proper understanding. Probably with regard to their own possibilities, this lack in comprehension is exemplified by the author's slightly clumsy attempts to wander the new terrain of abstract art. Except some thoughts about Alexander, uh, Alexander Calder's Mobiles, they do not discuss any other work of the 30s all shown in the exhibition, nor do they refer to already theoretical uh, reflections that by the end of the 1930s internationally circulated in the frame of art associations like Abstraction Creation and also run through the Salon's manifest written by Flavio de Cavallo. Two years later, a more elaborated attempt appeared with the article Constructivismo, published in the magazine Klima and written by Jakob Ruchti. Here we come back to him again. The only Brazilian abstract contribution at the second May Salon. His discuss discussion of notions like the equating of form and content, the belief in universal principles of, or the final pre preference of the denomination concrete instead of abstract art, suge suggests a deeper study of diverse European constructive or co geometric abstract tendencies like Russian constructivism, the steel, or Bauhaus, by this time synthesized in the before mentioned international associations. Like the resemblance here with Gorin, uh, which was a sculpture or a model, I don't know. It's the same like with the magazine Circle. There, uh, Naum Gabo wrote the introductory note, and if we compare the two texts by Jakob Buchti and him, it's sometimes the absolutely same wording. So the deepness of really um, the study of these principles is not, cannot be verified at this point. In line with these approaches, Ruchti claimed the Ethiopian idea of a possible improvement of society through the implementation of con constructivist ideas in the arts and transferred to Brazilian grounds could help to overcome the country's underdevelopment. With this dream, he was 10 years ahead of his time. But still in the mid-1940s, there was another visionary mind, the critic Mario Pedrosa, who returned to the country after several years of absence for political reasons, passing through Paris and New York, where he, shortly before returning, um, got involved with the work of Alexander Calder. This acquaintance inspired a first conceptual outline of an ideal, integrally synthetic and universal art. In short, an art that should be autonomous, free from all mimetic relations, and at the same time on the level of production and reception in deepest connection to life. 
Just as Rufti a few years ago, Pedrosa's very personal integral constructive project, as Atilia Arantes called it, comprised an artistic as well as a social utopia, tracing again back to the ideas of Russian constructivism, this deal, um, Bauhaus and subsequent movements. Instead of proceeding the analysis in direction to later developments of the 1950s and 60s, we already talked about the constructive project of Brazilian art, I would like to return once more to the 1930s until mid-1940s, a stage of Brazilian modernismo Mario de Entrachi defined as a constructive period. In contrast to the destructive impetus of the 1920s, where the efforts of actualization, nationalization, and universalization were limited only to elitist circles without giving a thought to the people and their social political condition. On the one hand, and stylistic experiments had missed a homogeneous line of development on the other, the new plan prescribed a double constructive mission of social engagement and aesthetic or technical perfection. Coming back to the 1933 SPAM exhibition, already its catalogue introduction written by Mario de Andrade informs about his peculiar interest in the category of constructive, constructivists, cubists and purists, under which he generally subsumed artists like Uccello, Ingré or Cézanne, as well as artists like Gleis, Gleis uh, Leger, Lot, Picasso and Segal, all of them represented at the 1933 exhibition. In his reflections on the logic of different artistic styles, according to what De Andrade calls the three elements of painting, artist, work, and beholder, he regarded Picasso and Segal as the most brilliant living artists because of their elaborate unification of the three elements. About Segal, we read, at the same time as he gives us a very personal, completely sober and contemplative understanding of the world, he reveals love to form, domination of materials and preoccupation for the composition. Reviewing the artistic lapse of the 1930s, an obvious devotion to social topics cannot be denied, but it has to be noted that concurrently always more importance was granted to aesthetic preoccupations of technique, material and composition. The visual grammars of the portraits, landscapes and still lives of the period explored expressionist, post-impressionist and forwist vocabularies. The artists of these groups had more humble and proletarian backgrounds. These works are like from the Grupo Santa Helena that also um, Miriam um, um, recalled before and uh, Grupo Bernadelli. Well, these groups, um, the artists of these groups had more humble backgrounds um, and proletarian, proletarian backgrounds in compari comparison to the SPAM members. Uh, often they were autodidacts and gained their lives in the area of applied and decorative arts, where we observed before geometric abstract elements could gain grounds during the period. Um, yeah, coming to the end. Um, the artists of this group, uh, sorry. <laughs> um, the growing importance of technical know-how reached a climax with the foundation of the Familia Artistica Paulista and is reflected in the foreword of the catalog for their first exhibition, a quote by Osafon and Jean Arré. The painting has its value in the quality of its pictorial elements and not in its representational or narrative possibilities. Even less than the purists in Europe understood in a general category as um, given by De Andrade, this guiding principle did convert uh, the modernismo representatives to non-figurative artists. Well, it did not, obviously. But there was an unmistakable call to order, and uh, just like uh, it had um, directed the artistic production in post-war Europe, um, it seemed like to travel to Brazil with the many artists that had spent uh, time there in the 1920s. And um, so uh, arrived there as a demand for technical perfection and I would like to pose as hypothesis also for a constructive imagery. 
We may perceive, um, for example, the constructive geometric handling of the spatial and formal composition, the play and merging between figure and planes, or the inclusion of decorative elements in works by Milton da Costa and Roberto Bulle Marx or Alberto da Vega Guignac. Um, reviewing the exhibition 20 Brazilian artists that took place in 1945 in Argentina and Uruguay, this constructive way found also special mentioning by Argentinian critic Jorge Romero Prest. He was obviously familiar with the theoretical reflections of Maria de Andrade and uh, shared his especially um, appreciation uh, for Portinari's masterly cons consolidation between Brazilian and universalizing elements. Oh, sorry. I was a little bit very nervous now because I have to end, I know, and I'm uh, <laughs> ex exceeding a little bit uh, the time frame. Again, also not uh, only with, my, with the 30s <laughs> that I focus in this lecture. <laughs> Okay, um, but we are coming to an end now with um, Portinari. Here again, I wanted to show the constru constructive um, way somehow that we see in the composition. And here now Portinari. And around 1940, Portinari had already become um, the official painter uh, of the land with international fame. And uh, for uh, De Andrade, he was like the paradigmatic modern artist, not only because of his fusion of Brazilian and universalizing elements, but especially uh, because he's always, um, uh, because he gave uh, like primacy to the content and so guaranteed the connection to the lived reality, which was necessary to bridge art and life. And this was one of the aims of Mario De Andrade, of his theory. Then, discussing the realism of Portinari Press in his 1945 essay, refers to an interesting observation from a 1939 article by Mario de Andrade. To this self-conscious realism, Candido, Candido Portinari adds another realism, which could be called psychic. He tends towards the creation of sensitive beings um, whose essence, whose fatality is Brazilian, without being it immediately, and even less necessarily, without a primary impulse from external reality. As we might assume, for the critics, a truly universalizing force of art resided not simply in the aesthetic realm of aesthetic principles, but in a supposed psychic or emphatic vitality, pictorial elements, lines, colors, forms, or composi composition should be endowed with and inter independently of their relation to the world outside the artwork, these enlightened elements should allow to be understood, interpreted, and communicate on a deeper universal level of human perception. During the 1930s, and with this paragraph I end the lecture, uh, Maria Pedrosa had also been convinced of a necessary synthesis between the aesthetic and the social and was already then highly interested in the active force inside artistic expression, which fascinated him in a painter like Portinari. When Pedre Pedrosa later discovered this active psychic force plainly independent in abstract art, and we may add, for this reason turned into one of its most passionate advocates, I would like to suggest that this has to be understood not primarily as a radical leap with his previous thinking, but as a structural shift. As minimal as it might seem, this shift had a significant consequence which made abstract art at all, un at all unacceptable to Mario de Andrade and fellow artists like Di Cavalcanti, like Di Cavalcanti, the complete coincidence of form and content. Although the representatives of a figurative and an abstract fraction of modern art could have been not more distant to um, consider the links between them, and I am very conscious about the obvious differences that should be taken into account on historical and socio-political grounds, both posi positions relied on the existence of a synthetic or constructive will in Brazilian culture. Thank you. Thank you.